Welcome to my channel, All for Health with Jane. Family, on Tuesday, the 26th of February, 2024, at the press conference, Lieutenant General Mkwanazi, in his presentation, he informed the country that six accused in connection with the murder of South African rapper, a.k.a. and his friend, Tebokotips Motswani, were arrested. The following day, the number of the arrested accused increased to seven. AKA and Tips were killed on the 10th of February, 2023, and the killers went AWOL. Thereafter, it became so quiet, we even thought this case was forgotten. In his presentation, Lieutenant General Mkwanaz indicated that the same strategy that was used in the arrest of the Senzo Meiwa suspects was used in this case. The suspects were arrested for other cases parallel to the AKA and Tips murder case. When police were satisfied, most, if not all, the suspects were locked behind bars. Then they applied for the warrants of arrest for the AKA and Tips case. Let's hope this will not cause the same confusion it caused with the Senzo Meiwa case where the defense could not understand how possible it was to arrest a person for one case and once he's behind bars, the person is questioned on a different case. Anyway, family, let's get back to this video. The purpose of this video is that I want us to look into the cases that were allegedly committed by this AKA and Tibbs suspects. So we're going to look at the first two and then maybe in the coming videos, we we'll look into the others. The reason is I don't want to have this video being very long. Uh, according to a uh, Sowetan Life newspaper, two of the suspects, who are brothers, Siabonga Gezani Ndimande and Malusi, Malusi Dave Ndimande, whose family own taxes in Durban, they met with their family members months before the killing of AKA and Tips. Then Demandes had a meeting plotting to kill another taxi boss by the name William Kunene. It is alleged that William Kunene was one of the taxi owners who was involved in taking over a taxi route at Malagasy. Apparently, the route belonged to the demanders, and obviously, because of that, they wanted to delete William Kunene. In this deal, Siabonga Kezani Ndimande, who is famously known as Ngele, was uh, uh, the one who was giving instructions on how the murder of William Kunene would be committed. He was the man behind everything, giving instructions to them, giving them different roles in how this is going to be done. Malusi, David Demande, who is the younger brother to Siabonga Gezani, uh, who is also known as MJ, together with a friend, they were given the roles of becoming shooters in the whole uh, uh, process. This shooting of William Kunene, that happened at a parking lot at a mall in Durban, was captured on a video that went viral. The video showed two men jumping out of a VW polo car, moving towards their victim. These two men were armed with a rifle and another one armed with a pistol. The shooter with a pistol went straight to Kunene and fired at him at close range and then ran back to the car. The one with the rifle seemed unconvinced uh, of the job uh, done and he approached the victim who was flat on the ground and fired more shots at him. Family, this is very sad. 
Later the same night, it is alleged that then Demande brothers, together with other assailants, met at the Blue Waters in Deben. At the Blue Waters Hotel, they met with the elders of the Ndimande family and celebrated their success in killing the deceased. Siabonga Kezan Ndimande paid the accomplices, witnesses, and the other assailants an amount of 1,500 rands each for the life of a person for the life of a family man, for the life of, you know, the father of children, a husband to his wife. They were paid 1,500 rands. Three months later, after the killing of William Kunene, a.k.a. and his friend Tips, Ahmedat, at a, outside the restaurant at the Wish in Deben. Then after AKA and Tips were murdered, the two Ndimande brothers disappears from Deben. So uh, allegedly, or maybe apparently, that's the time when they went to hide in Eswatini. Family neighbors in Kopolo in Swaziland where the two men have been living, told the times of Eswatini that the duo led a lavish lifestyle, with one of them seen carrying a black bank card. So meaning, you know, black uh, uh, bank cards are owned by rich people in this country. Then Demande Brothers, according to the publication, they rented a bed sitter in Kopolo for months before moving to Zone 4 at Mawalala. Every day was Christmas Day to them in the compound where they were staying. They always had a braai in the evening and shared the food with other tenants. Bebo Sahai Ganani, said one of the residents. The residents said that the men always took a taxi to town for groceries and other things. Another resident said, Akashembona, they were friendly. You know, their friendliness even hit the suspicion that something was amiss. What I know about them is that they were Zulu speaking, but were not discriminatory. I cannot believe what I saw on social media regarding the things they are suspected to have done. They were so nice to us, said this resident. Then the third resident said he was surprised to see one of them carrying a black bank card, yet they were not employed. I wondered how an unemployed individual could be in possession of a black bank card. Could something like a credit card. How do you have a black credit card when you are not employed? They were always found relaxing within the compound, enjoying themselves. By the way, family, it is alleged these people were given a lot of money. Uh, they divided 800,000 among themselves, which amounted to something like 133,000 each. So imagine you are not employed and you're given 133,000. It's a lot of money for them. Hence, it was easy for them to live that lavish lifestyle. The third resident uh, added by saying the way these two brothers, then demand the brothers, the way they were so friendly, they would sometimes join the neighbors when they were maybe drinking alcohol, when they were having their parties. So, so they would join them to show how friendly they were. Family then demanded brothers will soon be extradited into South Africa as soon as 
that process is completed. The names of the arrested uh, suspects for the AKA and Motswani's killings uh, who were in court yesterday in Deben, their names were released as Lindogu Tabani Mkwanazu with 30 years, Lindani Nzenzele Ndimande with 35, Sianda Edimieza with 21, 21 year old family. Mziwetemba Havi Kwabeni, 36 years, and Lindogu Hle, Lindo Ndimande. I see the other two Ndimandes here. There is a possibility that these two are related to the Ndimandes who are in Deben. There is that possibility. Because family, I saw on one of uh, the videos on YouTube, where one a resident was being, no, no, not a resident, but a person from KwaZulu-Natal was being interviewed, and it seemed like he is related to four of these accused. Hence, I'm saying my suspicions are these two demanders are related to the demanders who are still in Swaziland. Yesterday, we saw these five in court uh, having covered their faces until the magistrate told them to remove, you know, those face masks that uh, they used to cover their faces. And uh, some continued to bow their heads as the court proceedings got underway. Family and uh, later, outside the court, we see... Uh, AKA's father being interviewed by the media saying his wish is to see the mastermind behind the whole thing being arrested. Family, this is very sad indeed. In the next videos, we will look into uh, who are the other accused people in this case. We spoke about the two Ndimande brothers and then we look into the others. Family, thank you very much for watching this video to the end. Please like it before you leave. Subscribe for my channel if you haven't done so yet. I love you, family. Thank you. Bye.